Punctures or snake bites are something most bike riders encounter at one point or another. But in trials riding, the low tire pressures and hard impacts on rocks and edges make them a common problem. To the point that swapping tubes is almost part of the sport. One way you can almost entirely prevent punctures nowadays is going tubeless with a foam insert. But tubeless brings its own set of problems, like the tire burping or completely folding off the rim, the mess with the sealant any time you remove the tire, or that not all rims and tires even work tubeless, which is often the case in trials and BMX. When thinking about how to solve these issues, I had an idea. If you had a tube with a foam insert inside it, it would combine the mess-free nature of the tube system with the impact protection of tubeless with a tire insert. There's only one problem. How the hell do I put something that big in an inner tube and then close it back up? Before I show you how I did it, here's the final result in action. This is the very spot I got my last snake bite on. These edges can cut through tubes like butter. First, I used a normal tube. And to my surprise, it took a couple of attempts, but then... And now with the modified tube. Even at tire pressures as low as one bar, I could not get it to puncture in my test. And I tried. So far I'm very impressed with the performance of my little invention. And here's how I created the prototype. For my first attempt, I used the tube I had in my rear wheel. Unfortunately it wasn't quite wide enough for the insert I had made and completely tore because I used too much force trying to pull it over. So while I waited for wider tubes to arrive in the mail, I decided to conduct an experiment. What if I completely cut this tube in half, remove the torn bit and then try to join the ends back together? If I could do that, sealing a simple cut should be a breeze. When working with patches on bigger holes, their main weakness when attached from the outside is that the pressure inside the tube lifts them off the hole. And that's why I came up with the idea to patch from the inside. That way, the pressure should actually hold the patch on instead of pushing it off. So I went ahead and cut the bad part of the tube out threaded the insert through, made a ring of patches around it, which conveniently fuse together on contact, so you can use multiple of them to make a bigger one. Then I applied the vulcanizing solution and folded the tube back over the patches. After letting that cure for a while, I applied patches to the outside, and here we have it. A tube that was completely cut in half and joined back together. I guess now it's on to pumping it up and watch it fail. To my surprise though, it held air. There was a tiny leak which I plugged with more vulcanizing solution and another patch and then I went for a test ride. It was very noticeable that the tire felt stable on sideways landings at way lower pressures than I usually had to run to prevent it from folding. And I also smashed my rear wheel into a couple of edges with no signs of punctures. So now I have a bit of experience with patching big holes and finally got an extra wide tube we can work with. Let's make a proper version. Here's what you need. An tube, maybe some cable ties, a sharp knife, vulcanizing solution and lots of patches, or ideally two patches big enough to cover the entire cut, some rough sandpaper, tire levers, and your insert, which should be at least a little wider than the rim for proper impact protection. Start by making a cut long enough to fit the insert through, but short enough to cover with your patch. I recommend putting it on the rim side of the tube, so it experiences the least amount of motion when riding. Now feed the insert through, and be careful not to rip the cut open any further while doing so. You might be able to secure the ends with small cable ties if you want to play it extra safe. If the tube isn't wide enough to fit over the insert without having to stretch, you're gonna have a hard time on this step. With some patience though, you should end up with both ends of the foam sticking out of the tube. Now join them together using string or a cable tie. Make sure to cover the cable tie with enough tape so it can't wear the tube from the inside. Then you can carefully stuff everything in there and get your patches ready. First though, give the area a clean with alcohol, especially on the inside and start sanding all around the cut to roughen up the surface of the rubber. Be sure not to miss any spot, again, especially on the inside. 
Once you're happy with the result, take the vulcanizing solution and coat the inside evenly around the cut. You want to cover more area than your patch is going to take up. Leave this to dry for a couple of minutes. If your cut is under tension and gets pulled open, you can use a clamp to give yourself some slack to work with. Now stick your patch in there, making sure it's completely covering the cut and then press everything down. Keep massaging it for a bit so every part is contact and then leave it for at least an hour. After that you can simply patch the outside the same way and then leave the whole thing sitting for about a day so everything can fully vulcanize. You want the bond to become as strong as possible before you inflate the system so your patches don't rip off when the pressure stretches the tube. And there you have it. If you've succeeded, you've now got a puncture resistant tube. So far I'm happy with mine. I love that it's mess free and the puncture protection seems great. Anyway, let me know your thoughts on this one. Thank you very much and have fun riding your bikes.